Hello everyone, my name is Megan Lavota. I'm an ENFJ if you are new to my channel. And today I'm here with Jamie, who is an ISFJ, also known as your chill ISFJ on YouTube. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. So today, I, I can't believe I haven't even had you on my channel before. I feel like <laughs> I have, but it's like I've been meaning to for so long because I just love your videos. Um, if you guys really like, if you guys haven't seen Jamie's channel, you should go check it out because there's so much great content on there. You you are doing the she's doing the typology reading challenge thing with me, so there's some good book reviews on there, and also just I I would say one of the things I love about SI is it gives you these physical examples, and if you're wanting to learn about personality i definitely highly recommend jamie at like your blog your youtube because it gives it this really personal feel of like oh that makes sense to me like i think that you're just really great at making things make sense especially like if you're an nesi user and you ever get confused by me for example <laughs> <laughs> definitely like, if you're like, why is this lady never giving me any examples? <laughs> SFJ for that. But anyway, um, I kind of talked about you, but would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, maybe share a little bit about your journey with YouTube and typology. Oh, yes. Okay. So, <laughs> where do you want to start the womb? <laughs> <laughs> Wherever. I just opened up the Pandora's box. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, well, let's see. I'm one of six children. Uh, I found type after graduate school. I have a master's in history. Um, and I actually scored INFP. Mm. So, I lived for several months thinking I was INFP. Started a YouTube channel. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And um, over time, I actually had Susie, the introvert thinker, who's an INTP, come to me and be like, you are not an INFP. Mm. <laughs> but she was very sweet about it, very like thorough with her logic as to why I was an ISFJ. Mm. And so she was the one that like helped me see what I was actually doing cognitively. And that's when I started actually like reading literature from researchers rather than just chilling on Reddit all day, <laughs> which was a thing. <laughs> you know, what's so funny to me even about that story is that since you and Susie as an INTP share the same cognitive functions, the way that you even responded to the TI of like, ooh, this is interesting, like kind of even speaks to you being an ISFJ, where like an actual INFP might have read the TI the wrong way, which yeah. is so funny. Yeah, yeah. Her Do logic you, was good. Yeah. And I was just like eating it up. Like, oh my God, <laughs> like, yeah, you're more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you know what type your siblings are? Have you typed them all? Oh God. Um, so it's hard for me to like feel like I can nail down a type. Mm -hmm. I think at some point we're going to have one of my siblings on to sociotype mm. and that'll be interesting. But yeah. um, I kind of think she might be an ESE. <laughs> Mm -hmm. we'll see. so actually i have a question about that do you feel like i don't know if this is related to si at all but do you feel like for you when it comes to nailing down a type that it helps you like maybe you get it conceptually but it really helps you to have lots of different examples within the category and does it feel like maybe there are some types you understand more than others yes i feel like hmm, once i know someone's a certain type and I have met more than one person of the same type, like ENFJ, for example. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what an ENFJ is like, mm -hmm. and because of my own like lived experience. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And so, if I meet someone new, that you know, you, the NI starts coming out, and <laughs> nice. <laughs> start wanting to save the world, and mm. you know, <laughs> it's a good inclination. <laughs> So what types would you say you understand more and what types are perhaps harder for you now? In order to differentiate? Yeah. To see, yeah, I would say probably ENFJ is pretty clear, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I think usually ISFJ, I could tell. Mm -hmm. um, INTP. Mm -hmm. ESTP. 
I think what can be hard is like the nuances between lookalikes. So if I'm trying mm. to, if I'm pretty sure someone's an INF based on mm. just the things they're interested in and then having to like nail down, okay, is this FE or FI that they're doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they could be good at either one. It's just, mm. what's the privileging thing happening, you know? Interesting. Okay. Yeah. It almost is like just want, not quite sure of the, what their motivations might be for the action, but seeing that the actions are so similar. Right. Like, um, mm -hmm. Hillary, she's an INFP, mm -hmm. but I would say like her FE is very good actually. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, if I was just to not know her at all and to try to type her, what would I type her as? Oh yeah. You know, that's a really good, so that's like an interesting challenge because I think yeah. when you meet someone in the type community and you like trust their opinion on type, you might just think, oh yeah, they're this type. Uh, but like you have like asking yourself that, like, what would I think if they were wrong or, or like trying to get that out? That's yeah. interesting. And I've wondered too, like, I, I would say some types it's easier for me to know what they are just based on my experience with them. But also sometimes it's kind of how I tend to interact with them. So I feel like yeah. even just, it makes sense why ENFJs might stick out to you because it's like, okay, we have this rapport in our FE, but whoa, like, what is this? You have no <laughs> SI. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of mm -hmm. an interesting <laughs> dynamic there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we're really going to do in this video is, so not only have I not had Jamie on, which she's just a wealth of information, like so much just curiosity and like facts about type, like, so, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Not only is it amazing to have Jamie on here, but also it's amazing that we have an ISFJ on here because I've never had an ISFJ on my channel. And I feel like kind of similarly with ESFJ, uh, I don't really hear SFJs talked about that much in the type community. And I've heard, now let me know if you relate to this, but things I've heard from other um, SFJs in, is that it's sort of like this idea of, I get along with everyone really well in real life. How come in the type community, people are saying they don't get along with me? I get along with everyone sort of thing. Like, was that weird to you? Or did you notice, did you think about that? I think people just have a really weird idea of what an ISFJ is like. Because yeah. in real life, like even other ISFJs I talk to, we don't really have problems with many people. Like it takes yeah. a lot for us to. But in type, it's like, if you're an ISFJ, either you have massive mom energy <laughs> or you're complaining about like, <laughs> something like wanting yeah. to talk to the manager or something and I'm like that is not me at all either <laughs> yeah like, and something else that's kind of weird is that it seems like people are airing all these grievances about and about SFJs online but do you ever hear like do do you commonly get in you know fights with people where they're like criticizing you <laughs> you know what no. I mean like do you ever hear any of those to your face <laughs> oh yeah no I don't think so no yeah. Uh, I get made fun of sometimes jokingly for my ineffectiveness, <laughs> but it's never like, <laughs> you're so mean, or like, you're, you mm. suck as a person or something. Not at all. Yeah. I, I've had, a, I don't know if I've told you this, but I have a theory too, where, um, perhaps a lot of moms happen to be SFJs, or perhaps a lot of people assume their mom is an SFJ. But I think that a lot of, like, the hate about SFJs on the internet is just kind of mommy issues <laughs> of people just yeah. mad that their mom, like, yelled at them one time, and they don't really know how to separate um, what an SFJ is to their core rather than maybe one experience that they had with one yeah, where they maybe felt misunderstood or... And especially intuitives might feel that way. But actually, before I get into asking you these questions, I kind of want to just start off um, for maybe people listening that don't know that much about ISFJs. How could you sort of explain um, 
are there any sort of misconceptions that you've observed about them? Anything you want to de debunk about maybe what you're like that might seem different than what you might think about an ISFJ? Mm -hmm. I know that's kind of a big question, so. It's pretty broad, yeah. If nothing comes to mind, we, I could change it. <laughs> uh, um, well, let's see. There's a general census that ISFJs are like really big clean freaks, mm -hmm. which based on the ISFJs I've talked to, isn't true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like when we're talking about a type, we're talking about cognitive functions, right? Like mm -hmm. how your brain processes information. Mm -hmm. So yes, maybe there is something to SI and making sure that your environment, like being aware of your environment. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that you're like Betty Crocker, you know, like, <laughs> or like yeah. Mr. Clean, or like <laughs> <laughs> that, that doesn't have to be there. So I would de-emphasize uh -huh. that bit, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we also, we supposedly avoid confrontation, which I think is true. But in my experience, if an ISFJ needs to confront someone, they can. Mm -hmm. um, it, it depends on what the issue is. Like I've had issues where um, I haven't gotten paid for work or something. Yeah. And that's like a clear, like, okay, well, I have my hours here. I can bring you evidence. Like, this is important. Mm -hmm. So you have to confront. Yeah, yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And is what would you say um, that, like, maybe when you first started looking into the ISFJ description, what kind of stuck out to you the most as, like, the parts of it that you really resonate with? Um, I mean, there's a lot about FE that I, mm -hmm. I always did. I mean, even though I thought I was INFP, but still mm -hmm. the idea, <laughs> the idea yeah. of putting other people's needs above your own. I think that's mm -hmm. a big, even ISFJs supposedly do this quite a bit where, um, I at least recognize that I am a cog in the wheel. Like there's so mm -hmm. many people that my experience affects every single day, every day. So if I'm not doing my duty, whatever that is, everyone's going to get affected. So I try to like be dutiful in what I say I'm going to do and stay true to that. Oh my God. I literally was about to ask you if you believe that you have a sense of duty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. it's, I believe in my ISFJ video, that was actually one of the things that I really noticed about ISFJs in particular is that they always do what they say they're going to do. At least yeah. like, and maybe... How does it feel if you don't, like if you forget or if something comes up, like if you promise someone something, how does that feel? Oh God. <laughs> I, I have like an old school code of honor where it's like, yeah, if I tell you something, like I write articles for Psychology Junkie. Mm -hmm. So I write for Susan, who's mm -hmm. really great. And y'all should check mm -hmm. out that. Yeah. <laughs> but if I tell her, I'm going to get you an article this week. I do. And if something comes up to where I can't, I will feel so like sick with myself that I will push r myself really, really hard to like do twice as much next time. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't feel right. It feels like I screwed up. And it, when you have that kind of like another person is counting on you, like it's exemplified the kind of guilt, but as if it's for yourself, it's like I can self discipline really well. But that outside pressure makes it twice as intense. Would you say that it is pretty easy for you to predict, uh, like, how long it's going to take you to do something or how much energy is going to be required for the task? Um, I think so. Usually, though, like, I will front end things. So I will, I want things to be very particular and done a certain way. So uh -huh. I will give myself the leeway to work extremely hard on something in the beginning and then kind of go through and piecemeal what needs done, you know, afterwards. Oh, wow. That's so amazing. <laughs> like, I'm so the opposite of that. Mm. We're like at the beginning part of a project. Because, okay, my FE also really wants me to do what I say I'm going to do. But I, it takes me a while. It's almost like my NI is ruminating on how do I want to approach this? Oh. And something will be at the back of my mind. Like if I had to write an article and I said I was going to do it in a week or something, 
I would spend the first half of the week just sort of <laughs> while I'm doing other tasks, I'll get distracted and stare at the wall about that other thing. But it's almost like I'm cooking it up. <laughs> it's like I'm oh, cooking yeah. up an idea. Oh, and then when I'm ready, I just try and SE, just crank it out. And I want to, I like trust what my instincts are. Like I, I, I go back and edit. But I feel like if that was like the first thing to just float out of me, then it was meant to be or something. Oh, <laughs> like, okay. Like, but yeah, like, I guess that I feel like probably all FJs really want, don't want to leave anyone hanging. Cause I really relate to how you were saying about, I do feel like a little cog and I think about how everything I do is going to impact everyone. But I feel like I just make some mistakes. Uh, whenever it comes to like um how much time think something is going to take because mm. um, I always I think it's maybe because it takes me so long for something to cook up and for me to feel ready and it's almost impossible to estimate that Where like I can estimate how long it takes for me to do something but it's hard for me to know how long it's going to take for my and I to ruminate on something oh I don't know that's but. interesting. Mm -hmm. I almost think this applies to SI where when I, the moment I know something's due, I work on it. And even if I have oh, to work yeah. from here's just bullet points, here's detail, detail, detail. And the kind of narrative starts getting built mm. <laughs> off of those details. I can start weaving something. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So it's like you will figure out like maybe if you, if I had to write like an essay, like back, like when you were working on your master's or something, like, did you have to do many research papers? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So like, yeah, that's like one of the main things I procrastinate on as a psychologist. Oh, I couldn't. Right now. <laughs> oh, gosh. I always, I always do it like the day before and I spend a day to think about nothing but the paper, oh. which it's not really great. It's not great on the body. Yeah, if you could believe that. <laughs> no, but um, yeah, so it's almost like you have these SI, like, here are these pillars that need to be considered. Yes. And then your NE can sort of look at it from a higher perspective and kind of see the pattern from there. Is that how it feels? I think so, yeah. I mean, we're talking about research papers. A big part of history papers is having, like, evidence, you know? So you'll, like, have to quote different books or primary sources. I would go through and pull out the quotes I wanted, just stick them into the document there so they're there. Mm -hmm. So I can start working with them versus my own thoughts and weaving. I think, I guess, maybe the NE does come later. It's just, if it strikes me, yeah. I'll note it and nice. I'll use it. Cool. All yeah. right. So the first question that I have here is for you to describe a typical day how do you usually invest your time from your morning routine to your evening routine? Oh, okay. Um, when I get up, because of quarantine or like... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you could talk about a regular... You could talk about normal times. <laughs> okay. Normal times. Pre-quarantine. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would wake up, um, like take a shower... I'm big on egg sandwiches, so, mm. like, before every, before bed every night, I'm like, yay, get an egg sandwich in the morning, so excited. I love so. that so much. <laughs> so, when I actually have it in the morning, I'm just, like, enjoying, like, the taste, and then I have coffee, and it's just the right vibe, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I'll do that and, like, watch, like, I just started watching Community, so I'll, I'll watch a show and just feel the ambiance, you know? Yeah. And then usually I'll read some type book or like a fictional book for a while. Um, I'll talk to people online. Um, it's pretty unstructured structured currently just because I don't have a like in place job even before quarantine because um, mm -hmm. I was writing articles. So mm -hmm. I eventually start writing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you like to write in the afternoon more or in the morning? So I feel like I'm more productive in the morning. Like if I can start writing after I eat breakfast, as soon as my brain's hot wired to like crank stuff out, but I'll get distracted if someone posts a funny meme and then I'll just be giggling about it and go on like a meme, <laughs> like jump from meme to meme, <laughs> like oh baby Yoda or something. Oh like, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. 
yeah i it's just the fun stuff uh baby yoda kicks in and you know we <laughs> talked about that oh my gosh yeah i i feel like okay so i i think i might have tweeted this or something but I, uh, this is just something I realized about SJ humor is that they tend to just sort of beat the dead horse over and over in like a repetitive way whenever they find something really funny. And it's yeah. so cute to me, which I don't know if you would agree with this, but like Jamie on Facebook is sharing every single baby. Well, not every <laughs> single, I'm sure you choose the better ones, but there's almost yeah. always like every day I can expect to see a baby Yoda meme. Yeah. Do you, yeah. would you say you kind of like the idea of just like running gags or just like the idea yeah. that now every time see someone sees baby Yoda, they're going to think of you now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think about that. I don't think about my connection to it. Oh, I really? Think, I think, oh, this is cute and funny. Just go share. Nice. Oh, like in okay. that singular moment. But when you said too, when you uh-huh. did that on Twitter where you were like, <laughs> Jamie beats the dead horse of the Yoda. <laughs> like now, every time I see Baby Yoda, I do have that association where I'm like, "Ooh, I'm beating the dead horse." Because Megan said I was. Oh well, I hope I didn't make you feel bad about it. No, no, it wasn't. It was like it made me like laugh, like cackle. Okay. So it's like a funny, like here I go again. Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> like, I guess there's this sort of predictable element. Yeah. About SI. Mm. So just to sort of talk about this, even though I know we haven't done your evening routine. So <laughs> sorry. You're, no, but it's fine. I, I like, hopefully you're cool with the unstructured. Combo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you eat egg sandwiches every morning. How yeah. does that feel? Do you ever like want something new? I mean, I've had, usually it's eggs. My, see, my thing okay. was growing, growing up, we had a lot of like uh, sugary cereal Mm-hmm. And I knew my, it didn't feel right in my body. Like, uh, I'd get hungry really quickly. So I learned like, oh, well, when I have eggs, like I actually oh my God. have a sustaining period of no hunger. So I need to eat eggs. How do you come to those conclusions? I guess okay. trial and error. Okay. Trial and error. So, okay. Actually, this is something I've been thinking about a lot lately is that I've been doing a bullet journal. Have you heard of those? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been doing a bullet journal for about two years now, kind of on and off. I'm like kind of learning what my like TI system of organization is. So I'm kind of just like playing with it to see. But here's the thing. I feel like when people think about journaling and reflecting, a lot of it, I think stereotypically is like tap into your NF side, talk about your emotions, talk about your goals. The thing is what I'm realizing is that that's actually not really helpful for me. I actually, I had the idea a couple days ago that I should start journaling about, um, like, food or something. Because, like, for example, like, I've been trying to set this morning routine where I'm very upset with myself because I really want to be exercising a little bit every day. And I want to be, like, eating breakfast um, and also waking up more at a regular time. Um, but what I, whenever, like, I've I kind of started on this by tracking my habits and I I noticed about a year ago and this was like a profound thing for me that the days that I didn't wake up early and I didn't go to bed early and I didn't get in any sort of yoga or meditation or like something for like care for the body would be the days that I rated myself the least happy and I like Hmm. was had to see that yeah not something I really felt I like noticed oh okay like I'm stupid for not realizing that clearly these things do make me happy. So anyway, like even just like, I was in a really bad mood today, but then the past two days I was in a really good mood. And you know what? The past two days I went on a walk when I woke up and Mm -hmm. I did yoga where, um, for me today, last night I went to bed at 2 AM and I rolled out of bed and went straight to hunching over my computer and forgot to make coffee till 11. So it's like, this is the sort of thing, well, not to, I, I feel like this is a good parallel, I guess, to even talking yeah. about the ISFJ is that for me, this is like really an NJ struggle of, um, it probably sounds so obvious to SI that I probably just was tired or hungry, right? Mm-hmm. Like almost, it, it takes me a while to realize, but almost always when I'm beating myself up or in a terrible mood, 
all I have to do is eat something and I feel fine. <laughs> or like, I forget that. So I guess I'm just really amazed at your ability to even like notice over time, oh, okay, eggs are what make me feel happy because those are the sort of things that I think I want to be journaling about mm. because I want to provoke those realizations more. But I think, anyway. <laughs> no, I love that because I have the parallel of when I start feeling empty, like emotionally empty, mm. it's because I'm not doing things that are in line with whatever I'm supposed to do, but I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so interesting. Yeah. Wow. Very different, like strengths, right? And like mm. blind areas almost going on. Okay. So I wonder if by that logic, like it would be good for you to sort of journal in an NE way and sort of map out the NE to sort of glean some insights about what's intuitively going on where maybe I need to just, cause okay, this is a, this is a silly thing, but I realized that every time I don't want to eat what is in my kitchen, I almost always am craving and want to order Thai food or Indian food. Mm-hmm. But every time I try and make Thai food or Indian food, I make like a whole, I'll make like four things of ri- or four cups of rice. I'll make enough for like leftovers and I almost always end up throwing out some. And I don't know why. Because I love, it tastes so good. So why, it, it's one of those things where I, I beat myself up for being like, why am I making too much? And how come I can't get it the right <laughs> amount? And I re- like I made that connection though, after like 10 times of throwing it out, that, hey, I shouldn't make so much. Because I'm probably not going to want to eat it. I wonder if part of the problem is because it takes you so long to eat four cups of rice, the rice starts getting gross and you don't realize it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you're right. That's something where I don't. Yeah. Like (laughs) that's another thing that I like, I don't know like what the problem is. Like maybe it is like my body saying that the rice isn't as good, but I don't even really notice the taste difference. Yeah. Maybe. Um, (laughs) <laughs> when I think about how much yeah. I'm going to make and how much leftovers I want, you know, it's kind of like mm-hmm. you get fries, right, at a restaurant, mm-hmm. and they taste good fresh, but when you take them home and put them in the microwave, it's gross. You don't want fries anymore. It changes. Yes. Oh, gosh. Oh, my God. Yes. I, like, so don't really pay. Like, I, I feel like I don't really know how much those things change. Like, uh, interesting. I hmm. feel like I just give myself a hard one-week limit for everything. Is that gross? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a week isn't bad. It's just you're probably going to taper off where you're like, oh, I don't want this. And if you're not aware of like the sensory changes, you're probably going to be confused. Like, yeah. Um. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm impressed that you know that you like to eat eggs. But well, okay, here's what I'm trying. <laughs> well, I'm, what I'm seeing the connection Lovely. with you the connection with you eating eggs every morning and also sharing every baby Yoda thing is that SI has this like intense self-awareness all of the introverted functions are very self-aware in its own way but to me it's like you you even said earlier I know you know your body you know that it didn't react well to the sugar or of cereal and so you course corrected mm-hmm there's also like, I know it's not literally your body, but it's like, you know, your sense of humor probably pretty well too, to where something is kind of predictable in a sense. Yes. And I guess what I want to challenge uh, the listeners to consider is that perhaps SJs aren't boring. Perhaps they know themselves really well and that's why they're predictable because perhaps they just know what they like, you know? Yeah example with memes even Uh there are there are like five different meme pages i will go to every day just to see what new memes there are because usually i know those memes in particular will make me laugh okay yeah it's like the experience i i know i'm going to get a certain experience from doing these same things even if it's a little different are you someone that likes to rewatch movies and tv shows that are your favorite yes so can you speak a little bit to why you do that? Because this is actually something I've never really understood about people. I've had people explain it to me before, but I actually don't really rewatch anything. 
So, like, a big one is, like, The Office. I've rewatched mm -hmm. The Office about 20 times. And it's mm -hmm. because it's always funny. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I know it's going to be funny. I know the characters. Uh, I kind of, like, it's not like you can memorize each episode, right? So it, you still get surprised. There are so mm -hmm. many. Um, it just, like, builds. <sighs> okay. So your repertoire of memory builds. So, like, maybe mm -hmm. you learn more and more about a character each time you watch the same episode. But you're also doing something in the environment that's different. So maybe today you're sitting in your room watching this episode. But a year ago when you watched this episode, you're watching it with your sister. So you have like different in-person and visual things going on. Like each time. So it's so, always different. Can you explain how that impacts it? Because I actually, when I first, my first job where I worked at a magazine, there was a managing editor. I only worked with her for a couple of months, but I believe she was an ISTJ. And she said something about, she's told me something where it was like, you have to keep in mind where people are when they're reading this because most of them will be on their phone or something. Mm -hmm. And I know that's kind of just a basic thing to say, but I'm, when I, my instinct was, let's just make sure the words on the page are really getting across this essence of what the meaning of this is it's not really something i think about of where is the person when they're receiving it and the sense where like i wrote a sentence that i thought was really clear where she wasn't saying that it wasn't clear but she was like almost saying it needed to be clearer because most people are going to just be glancing on their phone and not really paying that much attention so it needs to be more clear or something and mm -hmm. i remember finding that weird but anyway, <laughs> can you sort of explain like what that means to you, I guess, of how does that change the experience? Right. This kind of applies to the phone thing, too. It's a matter of focus, right? So when you're watching mm -hmm. a movie or a show, let's say The Office, me and my sister mm -hmm. are watching it together, I care just as much about her reaction to what's going on as mine, as what's uh, happening. Okay, yeah. So it's like a, a split perception. Whereas if I'm watching The Office alone, it's me whatever's happening like is there a blanket on me am I snuggled am I warm am I hungry am I thirsty uh -huh. like I have that going on and I have the like giggles happening like it's more intent I guess um or intense um I don't know it's just the jumbling of awareness so it's you know, different it almost makes me think that your SI is like measuring how immersed you are in the sensory environment how much of it are you picking up on? So mm. like maybe when it's like maybe when you're with your sister and you watch The Office, you glance over at her and so you miss like some funny look or something that Pam makes or something. You miss it. <laughs> Pam, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is Pam your favorite character? No, Michael Scott is. Okay. So, 100%. Uh, confession, I've never actually watched the office. It, it's a very NESI, 100%. I've actually wondered if it was like SFJ humor. I mean, it could be. I mean, we in Socionics, Michael Scott is supposedly ESE. For people who don't know, that's FESI. Hmm. Hmm. Like, I can see that. <laughs> Alpha yeah. SF humor is like <laughs> dorky AF. What I've noticed about a lot of SFJ humor is that it's sort of like you might you might find it annoying that you see office memes everywhere and that it's just talked about all the time, but nobody can deny that it's funny. <laughs> Who gets you know annoyed, I mean? Megan? NFJs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so sorry, I'm not trying to say it's annoying. No, I love it. It's funny. I'm trying funny. to say that I feel like maybe the NI critique of it is that it's basic. Yeah, yeah, I get but that. But nobody can deny the result that it's funny mm -hmm. and that it has mass appeal yeah yeah and it's relatable mm -hmm. it's like hot chocolate so, everybody likes yes. hot chocolate yes and it's like and it's like i'm not even one of those people that likes to be like i don't like it because it's in i just happen to not <laughs> have ever watched it but i actually have been meaning to rewatch it because part of me is like curious about it 
But I even find the setting of the show, the fact that it is literally just things that happen in an office, very SI to me. I love that. I love, oh, well, what's interesting is when I went into the workplace myself, I, I did a lot of the shenanigans that happened in the office. Like I worked in an early childhood uh. center and would do shenanigans, you know? I worked at a, a gym and did shenanigans. Like you find a way to interact with the people around you in a fun way where you can connect and like mm -hmm. have a pleasant environment. And then you build up these funny little like inside jokes and stuff. Like that felt very, very real to me. The office does. It's part of the appeal. Yeah. And I think that that's really the, in, in an SI and FE way, almost everyone can relate to it in some way or has been in that situation to where it's almost easier to call back on it when you're like in an office and say this reminds me of this part of that show or something yeah I totally get that and it's so funny because like my favorite show is my favorite comedy show is Portlandia and I, don't, I think oh, yeah. I've talked to you about this before mm -hmm. but there's so many NI moments in that show that I always go back to and want to quote where like, um, I don't know, there'll be like some thing that's like a kind of a critique on how people are in society and it's, it's a joke. And I like, will always bring it up in like that exact NI moment I'm in where mm -hmm. it seems like for SI, it's like, okay, like the way that we even perceive is so different because for you, it's this SI thing of I am literally in this office and I'm in this same sensory sort of experience as this character where like, I think NI, it's almost easier to recall like this pattern is the hmm. same pattern from this show or something. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. The conceptual frame of the show applies or something. Yeah. But for me, I'm like, oh, Jim did this. Jim put this stapler into Jello, like I'm doing. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So I thought of an example actually is that there is an episode of Portlandia. And I think that Fred Armisen, I think he's an ENFJ. And the whole joke of it is that it was a 4th of July party. And he had the goal of going to every single 4th of July party in one day. <laughs> and. Carrie like was like I don't think you're gonna do that but they like it was like two people that were about to they were going together and what happened is Fred kept getting stuck in long intense conversations with people being like how are you doing and what are you where are you going from there and to where like the friend kept having to say come on we're late we have to get to the next one if you want to sit, stick to the schedule and he was like, oh, man, I'll be there in five minutes. I'm just saying goodbye. And he's like hugging everyone goodbye. And then um, this quote that Carrie says to Fred is, you're being rude to me by being nice to everyone else or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, I oh, think crap. of that all the time. Like, <laughs> that, I like, feel like I'm being Fred in that instance all the time. Yeah, okay. That's interesting. Does, does that kind of give you an example of what I mean of like, like I'm not thinking of the literal 4th of July barbecue. I'm thinking about the times in which me being nice to everyone else is being mean to someone that I actually care about more. Yes. So. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. But. Good example. Anyway. Yeah. I find it, this is just so, this is just so interesting because. I, I, I get SI in theory, but it's rare that I get these, like, perfect examples. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, okay, so we talked about the egg sandwich. We talked about uh, Yoda. Um, I guess, uh. tell me, tell me more about this routine of yours, if there is one. Like, do you have an evening routine? Yeah, I will go for a run. Usually it's... Uh, an hour to an hour and a half. It depends on how my body feels. Usually I get to the point where I'm like, okay, I've run enough. It's not a specific uh, amount. Usually I, it's several miles, you know, but it kind of helps to clear my head. I kind of think it's how I deal with any, like I'm kind of thinking the entire time I'm running, trying to process. Um, Can you explain how do you know when your body feels when it's time to run? 
it's like my body gets bored of running and running is very strenuous so it's like okay like my limbs are going kind of limp um i'm no longer having fun like i'm not a great runner like it's not like i'm quick and stuff it's just it helps me process it can be fun it can like your breathing pattern changes and to feel that it makes you feel like you're like striving so like you're breathing you okay yeah can you I, okay do you feel like um how does it feel like when you like like do you ever like miss a workout and like feel bad about it or do you just like know like do you feel naturally motivated to whenever it's you should i guess um i there will be it's like an effy thing to where if i miss a a workout or something i want to do for my body it's always for other people so in some ways like i'll feel bad because it's like well i want to give my body this but at the end of the day it's like i did i didn't give my body what it needs cuz i was helping somebody else so I don't feel as guilty. Does your body like let you know? How does that feel like if your body is like letting you know that you want to do something? Uh, I'll be restless. Like I'll, I know when I need to move and do something different. Um, I could feel like a, like a soreness or like a tingly or like the body gives signals to me. Uh huh. As high as high, let's say. Do you think it, do you have to think about it before you do it? Or do you ever just observe your body doing it? My body does it and I know. Ooh. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Like, that's just so profound to me. Like, you're like, hunger spoon. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, okay. Do you ever get upset? Okay, something that I deal with pretty frequently is I will get upset when I'm craving something and I don't know what I'm craving. Does that ever happen to you? Um, I always know what I'm craving. I'm upset when I can't have it. <laughs> okay. Like, I have, there's been times, I would say about maybe once a month, where I get very frustrated and uneasy for about an hour or two. And I, it's because I cannot figure out either what to make for myself or, or like, I'll like use SE and I'll look and okay. So like, I try really hard, like with NI to figure out what are the correct pantry ingredients for me? What are the ones that I vibe with? So <laughs> whatever yeah but like cool. so I I feel like I'm trying to like get the pattern down of what I like to eat but mm -hmm. anyway like there'll be times when like I'll like use se open the fridge I'll look and nothing is calling my name but I'll know I'm hungry and I'm like okay so like what gives or like I'll be like well am I I'll be like is there some vitamin that I'm not having that like maybe I don't have stocked and like my body's trying to tell me that there's a specific vitamin that I'm lacking that I have no clue. And then I was like, I'll like try and conjure up any sort of vision of a food that might be it. And I'll like kind of try and run through a list. Um, I'm, is that <laughs> I'm curious about this. This might apply to you. I don't know. Uh -huh. Um, do you know if you do certain things and eat certain foods at the same time? For example, when I want to watch a bunch of anime, I go out and buy Pocky because it's fun to eat Pocky and watch anime. So maybe when you get mm. restless, you're doing something that you have come to associate with a food, but you haven't picked up the pattern of what food that is. So maybe it's a certain type of food or something. You'd have yeah. to almost track it. Yeah, I think that maybe that is something I could journal about or something because I think you're right because I think that like, and I think what tends to happen too is I get very ambitious of like, these are all these meals that I'm going to be making either this week or the next week. It's almost like whenever I get almost like flashes of insights of what to make, like I'll be like, oh, I bet this would be good. I bet it would be good if I tried pasta with these vegetables this time okay sure and like I don't really look at recipes I just will randomly think of something that sounds good to make because I really do like cooking but like 
anyway, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll be very ambitious with like a plan of like, these are the foods I'm eating this week. Mm-hmm. And then I guess maybe what happens is um, I'll kind of crash and burn. I probably eat out about once a week. So I'll kind of reach this point where I crash and burn and I'm like, um, I need junk, more junk food. Mm-hmm. It's like I have this ideal of what it would be great if I ate every week. And then <laughs> I always need something else. I, <laughs> this sounds so I, stupid. but No, it's not stupid. It makes sense. I think maybe... So I do somewhat what you're saying. Like, I can kind of plan ahead. Like, I, th- it's usually pretty loose, though. I'm not like, on Tuesday, I will have a tuna wrap. On Wednesday, I will have a pizza. It's not like that. But I can assess, oh. like, okay, I need these certain in- ingredients because usually I like having tuna wraps. Usually I like having soup. So I have enough variety to where that day when I have my craving for whatever it is, the thing I want is usually in front of me. But if it's not, then I can go out okay. and get something. Okay, so actually, another thing, I was thinking about this recently because I realized that my mom, as an ESFJ, she almost never knows what meals she's going to make that week, but she gets the same ingredients because she knows, like, what she likes, and growing up with her, she would always cook, but, like, if I were to ask her in the morning, what are we having for dinner, she would say, I don't know, something, I'll make something. Like, she doesn't know. Do you relate to that? Yeah, because it's about what in the moment are you in the mood to eat and you don't know until you're ready to cook that's so weird it's like your taste buds will tell you something i think food is a really interesting example because i feel like we talk a lot about intuitive examples and then comparing si and ne but i don't hear a lot about about how does ni actually deal with sensory things because it's like yeah. I am a human. I do have a body. I do eat. Like I, I, I haven't <laughs> yeah. really heard that much about NJs talking about how they deal with things like planning their food. But, yeah. but even with something so small like this, it's still like, I have a vision of that. I'll, I'll be like, all right, this week I'm getting Mediterranean style ingredients and I'm going to make like three things that are that, or like the next week I'm feeling like Asian inspired and I'll just make that. But maybe that is, maybe I, maybe I accidentally like limit myself uh, and by not asking myself what I'm craving more or something. But anyway, hmm. that's interesting. I guess I'm just trying to understand where this comes from, from you, <laughs> this, this SI. <laughs> <laughs> where does craving, <laughs> craving come from? <laughs> yeah, like. Aphrodite. It's like, <laughs> I guess I'm like probably over analyzing how do you know when it's time to run or when it's time to eat something. It's kind of like when you tell me, I just know that this is going to happen. My body just knows I need to run and it alerts me. And I'm like, okay, I'm going. Almost like you're playing a video game and someone is like, go for a run now. They click the button. So you're like, okay, like I'll go. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you know? Do you feel like. So I feel like for me as an ENJ, I kind of had to learn to trust my NI in a way, maybe because it's my auxiliary in the sense that I've always had that sort of flash of insight. But I think just because of how society is as an FE DOM, sometimes I could think, oh, no, I'm being silly. And I've kind of doubted. But do you feel like over time, you've grown to like trust your body and what it's telling you more and more like, or do you think you ever had a problem with it? I don't think I ever had a problem with it. Um, yeah, I think it's just natural. Like if I'm hungry, mm-hmm. I'm, I was hungry, you know, like as a kid, that's one of the things you notice, or at least I, I did. Okay. No, that reminds me actually that my ESFJ sister Like, as young as three or four, she was independent, trying to climb on the cabinets, getting herself food. Like, she, like, started making herself food, like, at such a young age. Oh, I was just fed by my mom. (laughs) I, my dad likes to tell the story of me being two years old, Uh and in the middle of the night, I took, (laughs) I got this chair, pushed it over to the cupboard, 
went into the cookie jar and grabbed a cookie at two. Oh my like, god, kn- that's so my sister. Yeah, it's not funny. It's, it's so like funny. I'm, I'm, I'm so <laughs> craving <laughs> oh this god. dang cookie. Yeah, I, there's this really cute video, a home video of my sister when she first learned to talk. Like she was like, like just turned two, and I was like four at the time. So I was egging her on, but it's just her being like. <laughs> who wants cake? Me. Who wants cookies? Me. Who wants ice cream? Me. And she was just screaming that around the house. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, you want the good stuff. Yeah, my my first word, okay, <laughs> like my first, I'm pretty sure my first word was like mommy or something, but my sister's first word was cookie. It was my third. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. It was so funny. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, like, but it almost is like, oh, actually, I have a perfect comparison story for that. So, yes. Okay, it's almost like as soon as you got to know yourself, you had these sensory cravings. <laughs> where whenever I was three, I told my mom, I said, Mom, I'm going to be a ballerina when I grow up. And she signed me up for ballet. <laughs> so I was actually like, my mom didn't even like, be like, I want my daughter to be into artsy stuff or whatever. Like I, I, like, I just was like, I want to dance. I want to. And even like when I was little, I used to dance. I used to ask my mom to record videos of me talking. (laughs) So it's so funny. Like I'm like on YouTube now, but it used to be like, Hey, like I want to like make a show or like, I would like always want my mom to record things that me and my sister did. And then I would want to rewatch it which is like so funny. That's so cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. I yeah. Love so it's almost like my NI had like these things I wanted to do and you were just like, as soon as you like knew how to walk and like move yourself around, your body was just like going toward the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> to the, yeah. Yeah. For real. Like I'm still like oh that gosh. too. I'm still going to go steal cookies. Oh, that's another thing too <laughs> with my, mom and sister both ESFJs that if there are like cookies or snacks like anywhere like in front cool. they're always are like get that away from me like yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah like, they'll, they'll like keep eating and then they'll be like you have to get these away from me I have, like, like a, a little chocolate stash and I have to put it in a cupboard so it's not in front oh of me oh my either. god that's so funny but but I have to know it's there if I need it at the same time you know if I get the craving. That's actually something I'm really learning is that I need to have sweets and um, I need to have sweets and like snacky stuff on hand because I don't normally, because I don't really crave it that often. But the thing is, is that when I really do, then it is me denying my craving for hours and Mm. then me responding by wanting to order pizza at midnight. (laughs) because like it's almost like it's almost like I deny my SI impulse or it's like I deny my SI and then SE just gets impulsive that makes sense yeah yeah that's interesting yeah because if you you think about your hunger or something as this monster if you keep letting it grow and grow it'll consume you oh okay yeah okay yeah okay so yeah so you just know you just listen to your body it does it gives you a little weird Okay, actually, another question about that, though, is when you have a craving, Mm -hmm. do you just get the image of the food in your head, or do you get the image of you running in your head, or is it just your body just doing it? For food, I can taste it in my mouth, and then it tells me. (gasps) Oh. For running, it's like, because I feel restless, or like my legs feel limp, I'm like, okay, I need to run. Like they're just little signals I guess that make sense it like the signal the body signal probably sends a vision to my head where it's like okay I'm seeing myself run now I need to go run like I don't think it's just okay. like unconnected but I notice the physicality okay sure. yeah yeah because I guess like every time I get an urge to do something it always comes in the form of just an image of me doing it mm. th- then I do it but it's I don't think I've ever like tasted a food in my mouth before I wanted it. Oh, really? Like right now, can you taste pizza if you try? 
Mm -mm. I can smell it. Interesting. I can taste it. I can smell it. I can hear it. Like. (laughs) (laughs) I, I feel it's so. SI is so profound to me. And I think, you know, I, it's like, it doesn't get the love it deserves. And because of that, I feel even more stupid for how bad my SI is, is that I almost, I'll just ask you, I want to know, what do you mean by your legs being limp? I know that's such a stupid question, but like, I'm literally sitting here wondering what that even means or what that would feel like. Well, I know. How do I describe it in a way that, hmm, almost feels like your legs are no longer connected or like they feels like you're they're about to like fall asleep or something like um you're getting a little sore it's like okay i can understand what that means but i also can tell you that i'm probably constantly limp limp because the thing is is that when i meditate i'm not in my body and when i meditate i intentionally try and make my body alive Mm. So, hmm. so yeah, it's almost like um, the opposite. I, I have to intentionally make myself feel like, have you ever done a body scan meditation? Um, no, I don't think so. The whole point of it is it's just you close your eyes, sit in silence and try and envision, try and make your mind go from your feeling your feet all the way up to your head. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy doing that, but I'm always so shocked at how much it works um, in the sense that it's just really trippy. It really trips me out Mm -hmm. to like feel it all because I almost always feel like my foot, even like my foot literally will go to sleep. Like my feet will go to sleep constantly. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, so it's, it's almost like, it's interesting because SI is so monitoring your body in, in a way that your alarm bells go off even when maybe it's not even as bad as it could be maybe for an intuitive. But like, like you have this standard and it's so your responsibility that even when you go a little bit limp or you feel yourself going a little out of shape or maybe not pleasing your body in the way you want with the right foods, it's maybe hard to deal with. Yeah, like imagine a full cup of water full all the way to the brim. Like if my body's fine, the water's not moving. But if it's not fine, there's it's going to be splashing around a little bit and I need to fix it. Okay. Interesting. I was just I was just thinking too about mm-hmm. with this sensory, right? You get signals. Mm-hmm. I think hearing is a big one actually. I've actually had my hearing tested and it's supposed to be very good. <laughs> like better than average. And the other day I was just in my room and I heard a truck pull up and I instantly ran to the door because I knew it was going to be the mailman and I didn't want him to ring the doorbell, which would wake up my dad. And all that happened like this, like, it's just like muscle memory to the point of where a sound can tell you that much. (laughs) Oh my goodness. That is insane. And also very ISFJ too because you like were protect like you didn't want to wake up your dad yeah Mm -hmm. so that's actually another thing is that so I uh saw a mouse in my apartment about a month ago now oh gosh it hasn't been caught yet but I Mm. think it's gone I even called maintenance and they did some like sort of special trap or whatever but even like with my INFJ girlfriend, I think that, so even like in Socionics, um, my girlfriend's also an IEI and I'm EIE. So in Socionics, um, she has role SI. And I really can see that in the sense that um, when there's even a little sound, she would be like, Shh, and she like wanted to hear like if maybe it was the mouse. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would wonder like, well, how would I even know if that's what a mouse sounds like? But then she went and looked up videos of mice in order to hear what they sounded like. But even when doing that, 
I wasn't confident in if that sound was the same sound as that sound. Oh, interesting. So okay. part of me felt like I have the traps out. Why worry about it? There's nothing I can do other than have the traps out. Mm-hmm. Where I almost would rather just not even waste my time wondering about if it was or not. Where it's almost like I think like her SI is not great either, but she feels like more paranoid by like like she almost like wants to be better at it Hmm. Um, yeah well if you're also caught off guard with sensory I feel like it could be a little irky right because for me it's like I I'm fairly confident I could hear something and be like that's a mouse you know yeah (laughs) even like the other night there was like some weird banging next door or there was like this weird banging on the other side of my wall Mm -hmm. and um I I like couldn't try I couldn't picture like based on how my apartment is set up and the apartment complex I couldn't picture if the wall next to me was a bedroom or a kitchen I couldn't really I couldn't really envision that but I also had no clue like it didn't sound like anyone banging around in the kitchen it didn't sound it's almost like I have guesses of what a sound could be that are very obvious of like someone cooking or someone getting in the shower but Mm -hmm. it was like a sound and I didn't know how to place it and I didn't know really how to describe the sound I heard it and it woke me up and then I told my girlfriend about it the next day and I couldn't describe what the sound was to her Mm. so if you don't you don't have any associations to a similar sound. If you've never heard a sound before, you don't think anything yes. pops up? Yes. Okay. And I think that that's really, how, what you said is kind of on the, the nail on the, hits the nail on the head of that in general. I don't really like to bring associations from other things into what I'm looking at. Because mm. I like to take everything as the uniqueness <laughs> it is, which obviously is not always practical. I mean, um, mm. so would you, would you say that, I, I wonder just about your collection of sounds that, or anything in your memory, like, that have built up that you probably would be able to guess what a sound was. Yeah, especially if I've been in the environment with it. I actually keep having... <laughs> Mm -hmm. nfjs come out on my videos and be like i love your sound effects (laughs) because i never use sound effects Uh and sometimes even when i'm trying to explain a concept i'll be like um you know what's the thing it you know like Uh i'll use sounds to try to help explain oh okay i i don't know it there is like a (sighs) another thing too is that i uh wrote an Amtrak like over Christmas and it's fairly close to my apartment but I didn't really realize or register even though I've lived in this apartment for over a year I was like wait a minute can I hear the train from my apartment oh yeah and you can (laughs) it depends on the wind (laughs) which that was actually weird to me when I realized that it depends on the wind um because it it's like kind of close but like not that close in the sense that sometimes I can hear the train like the horn of it Mm -hmm. but it was weird to me that it wasn't until I had like the SE experience of going on a train that I even wondered have I ever heard the train sound at my apartment because there's so many just background sounds that I tune out right Yeah, that's so funny. When I first came up here, like, within the first week, I was like, what is that loud sound? It sounds like a plane, but I don't know if it is. And it ended up being a train, but because of the distance, it sounded different. Do you feel a responsibility to know those things? Like, if there's ever something like that that confuses you? Yes, it feels off, and I need to be able to know what it is. Um, Like Interesting. In order to feel safe, I think. I think it's a safety thing somewhere. Okay. And do you think, too, that 
is it part of just because okay my mom always tells me because I live in like the city and my parents live in the suburb my mom always tells me things like just know your surroundings or like just be careful of your surroundings aka Mm -hmm. be safe But do you think that that is kind of like a way of SI to be safe of like, if I hear a sound and I know what it is, then that means that if there ever was any sort of danger sound, I would be able to, I, you would stop and wonder about it because it would be a different sound. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like when the fire alarm goes off, you know, you're triggered, right? So when you hear something that's different, unusual, you kind of, or I at least do, want to know what it is in order to determine, is this a normal sound that means life is happening normally, or does this mean there's a problem, you know? So that even reminds me of, like, my oven, there's something kind of wrong with, well, there's something, like, wrong with either my fire alarm or my oven to where it almost always, the fire alarm goes off when I'm cooking, even if nothing's burning. Oh, shoot. (laughs) And so, but really when it goes off, I'm so nonchalant about it. Oh, I can't stand it. Oh, uh, God. Even on accident, it uh, it irritates me. And I was like, um, I was like, oh, well, I know it's not burning. I'm checking it. Like, for me, all it is, all the sound is, is a signal that it might be burning. But it's not really, like, I don't have anything really even associated with the sound. Like, the problem is the burning. And so like, that's why I'm like focusing on, is it burning? And like, I was cooking potatoes and they like, weren't even close to being done. And so I was like, just kind of like laughed about it. I'm like, well, that's annoying. It's going off because I don't know. Yeah. I love that. Go ahead. It's a maybe like, that's, what's interesting. Like, even if I am in, in charge of my kitchen and all of a sudden, like the alarm goes off, I'll check everywhere to make sure that I, I'm not missing something somewhere else, you know? Mm. Cause it's like the alarm, <laughs> it means danger. I need to check oh. for all danger. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's and it seems like you almost are like the alarm means danger yes. we're like I'm almost saying burning is the danger and mm. this is the sound that is telling me to check if it's burning mm-hmm. so I feel like even maybe on a physical level you might even get any sort of like fight or flight response or like any do you feel like triggered by the sound like how does that feel like to be triggered by the sound Oh, my body tenses up. I think it might have to do Uh, a little bit with inferior NE because it's like, even if I can see that like my food's not burning and the alarm goes mm -hmm. off, it's like, well, anything else could potentially be going (laughs) into flame and maybe I need to check other places too, you know, like Mm -hmm. it's just one of many possibilities. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So I have another question for you and then I feel like after that maybe we can wrap it up because I feel like I've learned already so much just from that one question (laughs) but I feel like this one question I know right but this one I do want to touch on and talk about for a little bit if you're still free is um describe an ideal day what would you love to spend your time doing if you had all of the resources in the world to support you so this could look very similar to your typical day. It it could be just that you have more money and you're able to do things, or it could be that, you know, maybe you live in a different place or like are able to see more friends or like you're in better relationships. Like you can make it a complete daydream, but I kind of just want to see like what you're aiming toward, I guess. Yeah, I know my, okay, my first thought was a day with, just having like a regular day with like somebody who loved me and who I could Mm -hmm. love on and like, you know, Mm -hmm. eating and watching movies and just like enjoying our time. That was my first thought. My second thought was Mm -hmm. I could meet Hugh Jackman (laughs) (laughs) and just spend the whole day asking him about like his roles and chat with him and he's supposed to be ESFJ so I feel like we'd get along and... (laughs) do you think that 
um well one i want i sorry i said that wrong i think that if your typical day is similar to your ideal day then you're doing pretty good yeah well that's the thing though is every day has it's good like i don't have mm -hmm. to go on a roller coaster to feel alive mm -hmm. like i feel alive from the little stuff like I don't, it doesn't take a lot yeah. to please me <laughs> You know, I wonder if SI feels more alive by the little stuff because you're more um, you're more responsible for making sure that you're giving your body what it literally wants. Mm. And so it's like if you're constantly doing that, then you're like super powered. Like, I, I don't know, like you're just like happy, right? I mean, that sounds so silly, but. No, it's if you know what you – I don't know. I I kind of chase after joy quite a bit. So that's why I look at a lot of memes, right? I'll I'll write funny, quirky stuff. I'll watch quirky mm -hmm. stuff. Like, I know how to make my joy meter go up. And when people contribute it to it, too, like, that's the best. Like, I have a friend who sends me, like, look at my coffee today that I got from this restaurant. And the picture just makes me, like, so happy to see this person enjoying a coffee. <laughs> like little things like that I'm just like this is why I'm alive like some people want to save the world wow. and I'm just like let me see all the little things you do well that's so that's so nice I mean I I honestly envy that so much and I actually don't know why it's so hard for me to mm -hmm. do that because I guess for me the question is well how do you find purpose in that because I don't know how to keep going with that purpose. But then it's like, I guess if you give your body what it wants, then your body has the energy to keep going. Oh, my body, it feels right when I am enjoying life. Like, I feel the, I've tried to describe this before, where like, mm -hmm. how do you feel joy? Or like, what does it feel like in your body? It feels like a lightness. It feels bubbly. You get the giggles. You get the like oh, I just, it feels good to be alive. Like, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're just feeling it. And, like, I chase after that. It's almost hedonistic yeah. in a way because it's, like, you just care about your own, like, pleasure. But it's, like, lovely to share that in the little things. <laughs> yeah, and my my grandma was the ESFJ. I know I've mentioned her to you before. She always, like, her quote that she always said is just, like, don't let anybody steal your joy. Yeah. And I always find that, I found that a weird, to be kind of a weird phrase. I understand, like, she probably didn't, like, coin that. Like, other people say that. But I was, like, steal your joy. That makes me think <sighs> that you think that joy is intrinsic to you and that it's yours just by right of being like almost like it's not something that you can experience it's almost like it is yours yeah you know? I love that like yeah I can expand on that a little yeah like, I'd love to what it feels like to have your joy stolen okay when you yeah. are a person that every day has like a sense of positivity like I do feel like I'm a pretty positive person I like giving people joy I like making jokes I like feeling it when a person in my life does not let me feel it like they shut it down they make me like they take my like hey how are you like I did all these things today and like I'm excited about it how are you and they just meet me with bitterness and they meet me with like contempt and anger and all these things it is like they're stealing my joy because my FE has to be kind of brought down to wherever they are because I know they don't want this from me like my natural sense of self so it is like a stealing and you just feel so deflated all the time when you're around this person. Yeah. And it's the worst feeling. And I totally relate to that on like an FE level of like whenever people are like dismissive of my happiness, it, it's so, it's so hard. Yeah. It, for me, it's almost always like when I'm gushing about some project I'm working on or like if yeah. I'm talking about something I'm about to do. And you know, sometimes people can even do that unintentionally where like, if I have like really big goals, I, I've had to learn that if I'm like gushing about something I'm really excited about, um, other people aren't necessarily going to be as certain that I will be successful as I am certain that I'll be successful because 
a lot of what I do is in, it's like taking a risk. It's taking like a risk on what I believe is my path. And a lot of people are afraid to do that. And so I've, I've realized that if I'm gushing about like something that I'm about to do on my path, then it's like other people that have abandoned where they're going on their path because they don't think it's practical or they don't think it's possible it's not like anything rude to me. They just might not even believe that that is possible. And so um, they kind of might come at me and ask me to be practical, not in a mean way, but because they, maybe even they care about me. And that is how it feels like that's similarly to how it feels of like, kind of like shutting down my optimism. Yeah. And faith. And even then I think, you like me you're trying to share it with that other person a sense of joy you're like look at this thing i'm pursuing i'm trying to help people with it isn't it awesome and you have someone be like you can't even work that yeah yeah so like deflating it really is yeah and so i guess to be honest i don't mean for this to come off as rude I, i don't think you'll take it as rude but sometimes when i look at si or sfjs I wonder, like, how do you get the energy to keep going? But Mm. maybe the answer is as simple as really good food and also relishing in what it feels like to be human. Because, like, it's not like that I think that you shouldn't feel that way. It's that I don't know how to feel that way. Like, my ESFJ mom has always complained about me in saying that um, I always – it seems like nothing is ever enough for me Mm. and that I'm always going to be chasing something, which in a way she's right. But part of it is like, well, I enjoy the growth journey, but it's like, I do enjoy the growth journey of always growing and never stopping. How do I, how do I go to sleep at night feeling that it was worthwhile? You know what I mean? Like, and it's not that I, logically, I know it's worthwhile, but that feeling in your body, that's what I want, you know what I mean, of, and I don't know if, is this weird to you that NJ, or or like, have you thought about this much before, or like, can you tell that NJ seem that way? I think that from what I can tell of NJs, y'all are doing what you're supposed to be doing, you know? Like, I I think when you have a passion to move towards something, you should be doing it. I don't think we're going to experience the same um, affirmation or feedback, right? So, like, if I'm sitting here and, like, (laughs) seeking joy, right? Like, I'm a person who happiness is, like, really important to me. And I know it's not to everybody. Like, that Mm -hmm. feeling is not the most important thing to people. But if I'm constantly pursuing that, at some point, I'm going to get to that area of, am I actually, like, having a productive life? Is my life worth something just because I'm pursuing happiness all the time? Like, Mm. I have a a very different, like, uh, judgment meter that I get from the outside than you do. But we both experience that kind of, like, well, my brain's headed this way, you know? Yeah, I never question that I'm on the right path. Like, and I get excited probably every day. But I guess that's kind of the difference is that being excited every day is different than feeling joy and peace Mm -hmm. is that if you're excited every day, that is actually really overwhelming. Like, yeah, yeah, because I, yeah. Um, And so there, it's not that I'm even not happy. Like I'm, I, I feel happiness all the time, but that sense of like, um, and it's almost like, I don't even think I've ever felt it, but my FE can pick up that that is what SI is feeling. So I can like pick up the feeling even of calmness from being around SJs, but I can't recall a time I've felt that this way, but it almost seems sort of like a all in a day's work. Now I'm going to kick back and you know, that, that sort of mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Put knowing you've put in what you need to for the day and yeah. like being able to revel in that. 
and not yeah. having the restlessness of I need to keep pursuing my goal. And I mean, dating okay. an INFJ, it's we both almost always fall asleep while doing something. Oh, hmm. okay. Like, okay. I know, right? Like, either in the <laughs> middle of a show that we're forcing ourselves to watch for fun or in the middle of a project or doing something for work. Wow. I've fallen asleep within the past couple months. I've fallen asleep reading one time. Otherwise, I've, like, gotten into bed. I've turned off the lights. It's, like, all set up. Yeah, that whole thing, uh, <laughs> it's really hard. I'm, like, really starting to crave it because I know that, in a way, like, um, it's, like, my – I will reach my goals. I will get where I'm trying to go. But unless I proactively do something about my sensory, is it ever going to feel worth it? Because it's like, for example, this video, it's very enjoyable to me. I love talking to you. It's so much fun. I feel alive doing it. But what if I do something like that every day? It's like I never know when to quit. And so I never have that feeling of I did enough for the day you know yeah. like and so it's almost like I've been realizing I can't just design a life where I don't have these sort of like um t it's time to shut the brain off thing right I, yeah it's almost like you need a uh, a timetable set up for you or something to where it's like if you, as long as you work you know your little butt off <laughs> until 8 p.m you know, you could feel enough to where after 8 p.m. it's good. I think, I think in... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I think in socionics, like an mm -hmm. LSI would be helping you structure that out to where you were yeah. forced to feel <laughs> relaxed. <laughs> like <laughs> Yes. And I've noticed with them, because I have dated a couple of them before, it feels like I'm stressed about something or I'm talking about something and they just observe or notice what I typically do. Like, they'll just be like, well, you feel this way every time you do this or something. Or it's like every time you, or it's like, I don't even know how to give an example, but I feel like they almost like call out with SE, like what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or and it's not even like it's it's weird because I'm like the one that uses the feeling function but sometimes they even are the one where like they would say oh well you don't really like your job or oh well you don't really like that person or it's like I'm wondering like why does this keep happening or why mm -hmm. am I stressed and it's like oh well it's because you are I don't know it's like they view it as so like well obviously <laughs> I don't right. know like <laughs> like I feel they very have a, seen by them. Yeah. Well, and I think they're so structure-based, too. Mm -hmm. So to see, like, an EIE going around and, like, I want to work as hard as I can, da -da -da -da, no structure, and they're like, I yeah. will discipline you into, <laughs> into yeah. you know, almost more productivity because yes. they're relaxed, too. Like, Yes. You know. Well, they're really good at knowing what works for them. And it's like, that's what I'm trying to figure out. But they, yeah. it's almost like they can look at me and they know what will work for me. Um, yeah. Where it's like, oh, well, have you tried, you know, journaling about this? Or have you tried doing this? Because it seems like this is what would work for you. Like, if they really know me, that is. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I guess another question, though, for you is, before knowing about typology and all of the different types, do you feel like you had a sense that NI existed or that NJs existed? Like, do you have any close in your family or have you observed that sort of behavior and been confused by it or encountered anyone that was confused by your SI? I'm not sure if I ever got exceedingly close to an nj before type like i mm -hmm. i oddly met like an infj at the same time that i mm -hmm. got into type mm -hmm. um but otherwise i feel like there were plenty sps you know mm -hmm. plenty S sjs 
So when you learned about type, did it kind of initially illuminate to you the difference of like SP and SJ? Like, cause you've observed that like before knowing type. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that was pretty clear. I think just talking to <laughs> NJs over time too makes it pretty clear. Like I feel very, yeah. uh, <laughs> like lay on the couch and feed me potato chips even though like I I have a master's degree right like so I I yeah. can totally pursue my goals and like meet them but that's the thing is like I always meet them and then I'm like okay I don't know what I'm doing though like it's so hard for me to be like I want to do this thing and I'm gonna do this thing that's the hard thing what do I want whereas okay, NJs yeah. know what they want they just have to be able to put in the daily work to where they don't <laughs> overstress themselves and they'll get there like yeah it's like I know what I want and what life I'm building for myself but I don't know like all the different steps from getting from point a to point b it's yes. like I know I'm not exactly where I want to go now but I also know that I need the now in order to get to where I'm going so it doesn't really make sense to just drop everything that I'm doing now and jump into like you can't just quantum leap into something so it's like navigating that sort of sliding into it because I recognize there's always going to be aspects that like are not ideal and sometimes I even wonder if it's SPs that can get naive in thinking oh I have an I I have a new idea so this means I'm going to quit my job right now and then just do it and oh. it'll work out like I don't know like I don't know if that's how some SPs can think, but like I have the idea and then I have to gear up to acting and then I have to sort of balance like I can't just, I don't know, it's almost like plotting how to get from here to here can be kind of just hard. I take just very calculated risks, I guess. Yeah, it's you know the uh, you know the end goal mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. sure it's just navigating the the day-to-day -day time mm -hmm. to get there so do you feel like when you first learned that ni was a thing like were you very confused like were you like oh i didn't know that this existed or i didn't know that people didn't use si i remember thinking well because what i had learned ni as was these kind of aha moments like everything mm -hmm. makes sense I was like, oh, I do that. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure I do that to some extent. Yeah. Um, but it's not like to the extent that NJ uses, like, it's so different. Yeah. And it's, I think, it's just so hard to, well, really, it's hard to explain interpretive functions because there's so many things going on that, like, I, like, okay, I, part of me wanted to say, oh, well, it's so hard to explain it and I, because it's so deep. But it's like SI is also so deep. Like, what if I were to describe SI as, oh, it's the function that knows what you're hungry for? Like, that would sound so stupid. Then everyone would be like, oh, I'm, I do that. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's how it seems, though. It's like both SI and NI, they like are able to see something, like the like overall impression of their life in a way. And, I think that that's why J's, because we're both like J's and MBTI, everyone who's a J and MBTI uses either NI or SI. That's why the stereotype of J's of being like very consistent, it's because like I'm like beholden to like this NI thing, but you, you are to your SI. Mm -hmm. You like egg sandwiches. That's just how you roll. <laughs> you know, like there's just, like things like that. <laughs> it's like, it's consistent. Yeah. Um, and actually, that reminds me, I don't think I've ever clicked this before, but I feel like people, I think one of the charming things about FJs is that when you get to know us, there's always these little quirks of like, um, oh, that's how they are. Like, they're always that way. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know what I mean? It's probably like that with everyone, but I guess like, do you ever have people talk about you and sort of like a, oh that's so Jamie or like oh, do they yeah. like tag you and things like oh yep. that's the most Jamie thing ever yep. I feel like all of my friends do that to me but you have to get to know me like to know 
you know? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You know what, though? It's a lot about, like, re FE reflecting outward. Because if you did that to an FP, I feel like they'd be a little annoyed. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, but to be maybe. like, this is you. Yeah. And I feel <laughs> like I... There are certain things that I kind of gush about and then people know, like, yeah, like I've talked about Portlandia several times. It's like my favorite show. Like Tame Impala is my favorite band. I used to eat Chipotle all the time in college. Like they're like little things like, so something silly. I don't know if I've told you this, but I used to drink six Diet Cokes a day. Did I tell you this before? Oh, I remember you saying, talking about Diet Coke. I remember this. Okay. So yeah. I used to drink like six Diet Cokes a day and I would always like walk in everywhere I went with like a big quick trip drink, which is like the gas station drink, uh, full of Diet Coke. And so it would be like, like I'm, I am consistent in a way, but not in an SI way where like, people would either if they got a diet coke be like oh my god I feel like you or like you know oh, yeah. I'm like I know what I like and I I don't know like would you say like you know what you like yeah yeah like I don't know and the, the stereotype about like fi knowing what it feels and fe being other people's feelings like I don't really think I don't know I don't think that's a great way of describing it because like I know what to do in order to get me happy on most things like mm -hmm. um but like I don't know. I guess I saw on my Facebook timeline a few days ago that whenever I stopped drinking Diet Coke, I I screenshotted the Facebook page of me liking it and then I unliked it and I screenshotted that as well and I posted on Facebook the moment of me unliking the page. Oh wow. <laughs> it was okay. like after I stopped drinking it. And I just shared it cuz I feel like it's just kind of a joke with like a lot of people that I knew. Mhm. Mm and I actually got so many comments on it, people being like, what? You yeah. changed that? Like, I don't know. I feel like just by, like, I am a creature of habit to an extent, just not in, like, a sensory way. You would have to really know me in order to track it, I think. But anyway, um, anything else you'd like <laughs> to add? <laughs> I just... Um I just think that people naturally, uh, or at least, I know SINE does this a lot, where you form associations with people, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, your attachment to Diet Coke, to an SINE user, yeah. I think it's more surprising that you changed ways. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Yeah. And I feel like, for me, I, if I really know someone, like, it's not that specific, but like, for example, my girlfriend, I almost always know sort of things that she would like, even if I've never heard her talk about it. Like I can, I bought her like this journal and it just had kind of a cute looking cover and there was no literal reason why I thought that she would like the design. I just felt like I just knew. Yeah. And so there are a lot of things like that, that I feel like I can get like the sort of NI about someone. What's so funny is my mom is an ESFJ. She's so bad at knowing what sort of clothes I would like. Like, <laughs> she, like, will look, she always shows me, like, ooh, this looks like something you would wear. She's like, you have a shirt that has a sleeve kind of like this? Or she'll, like, ooh, this looks, like, kind of funky. But it's, like, not really the nail on the head. Like, she knows that I'm kind of quirky, but she'll, like, pick something that's, like, it really doesn't fit my vibe, but it is, like, in an SI way quirky. And so you can yeah. see she's trying. Like... I don't know. Oh, yeah. The the kind of vibes that SI and NI pick up are probably different. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. But, okay. yeah, it's really interesting to think about those differences. But, anyway, I hope that everyone <laughs> watching this understood a little bit more about the ISFJ. And, you know, I wouldn't normally talk about myself so much in, a, in an interview like this, but I do think that in a way – especially for if you're an NE user, it really helps to see both of like what you're not as well. Like, yes. because I think that, you know, the assumption we can have if we're just listening to you or something is like, if, like you wouldn't pick up on how SI it was unless you knew just how much NI doesn't do that, you know? Yeah. 
and with a lot of with a world full of a lot of SJs, you might not actually know how much NJs don't do that. So, and we also don't talk about it because we feel weird about it. You know, like we don't want to be, we don't want to sound like we're complaining or dramatic because it's like, I don't know, it's just feels stupid. So, um, but anyway, thank you for chatting with me, Jamie. And I will leave her YouTube uh, channel below that's linked below. Also, if you are new to my channel and you made it all the way this, all the way through, I do offer typing services and I have a membership group where I'm going to be doing like a um, uh, virtual workshop a, a month. And so that information is also below if you're interested in that. So thank you so much, Jamie. And thank you all for being here. Bye. Yeah, thank y'all. Yeah.